Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India वेलकम विल कंटिन्यू टू थ्री पावर के फैक्टोरियल डिजाइन सो फार वी हैव सीन टू द पावर टू डिजाइन टू टू द पावर थ्री डिजाइन एंड जनरल टू टू द पावर के डिजाइन विथ एन रेप्लीकेट्स और विथ एन रेप्लीकेशंस so in this lecture we will see when what will happen to to the power k factorial design when n equal to 1 otherwise we say today's lecture is 2 to the power k factorial design design with single replicate single replicate so topic is 2 to the power k factorial design with single replicate now what are the things we will discuss we will discuss in detail how do you conduct the analysis when you have single replicate in 2 to the power k factorial design with an example this lecture also prepared based on chapter 6 of montgomery design and analysis of experiments let us see some of the issues related to your experimental design and the prediction of response line or response surface when the number of replication is less so we will go for less replication or single replication owing to the resources or other way going limited resources so that means if you have limited batches of raw material in that case what will happen you cannot conduct full replications n replications you may require to conduct one replication per batch for a particular combination like this 2 to the power k so so what i mean to say you have resource crunch whatever may be the reasons so now if you do that what will happen that the effect of noise that will be there and that effect cannot be cannot be uh, separated out ultimately and the estimate because of the replication n is 1 the error estimation will become incomplete or it is difficult or it may not be able to complete the error you will not be able to do this that is the true factor effect which is inclined slightly this one and this may be the the bound 95% bound so if you have less number of observations like single replicate case you may get a get a predicted or fitted line like this so in this case what happened it is deviating from the true factor effect line so that mean if your factor if a factor you keep at minus or low level so the true effect is here and when you make it high level the true effect is the difference is there but because of less number of observations if you get like this of here it is showing almost no effect on y so this is due to random variability in y two measured responses are obtained shown by dark dots estimated factor effect is close to zero now if you have more number of observations what happen 
this estimated effect fact line this will become closer to the true effect. So, here what happened your due to the less noise less variability in y gap between low and high level of factors is more and reasonable estimate of the true factor effect. Okay. So, in a nutshell what I mean to say if n equal to n equal to n your estimate will be more precise and it will be it will be suppose if this is the true effect it may be close to that low to high this is y and this is x. If n is 1 what will happen you may find that the same case the the the, the, the may be like this. So, there is no effect that is not the true sense. Okay. So, so, be careful that the replication is a issue very key important issue. So, it is always advisable that you go for more replications, but many a times you cannot do this. So, here what we are showing you that if this is the situation how can you you analyze the experimental data and find out that what are the effects that are significant and what are the effects that can be excluded from the model. Okay. So, a single replicate of a to the power k design is sometimes called an unreplicated factorial. Due to single replicate no internal error is estimated, higher order interaction are assumed to be negligible most of the systems are dominated by main effects and low order interaction whereas, higher order effect interactions are negligible this is called the sparsity of effect principle. So, now question is that why single replication will work this will work because of the because of the sparsity of princi effect principle. Suppose, you have a b c and d that four factors four factors each at two levels. So, 2 to the power 4 equal to you have 16 runs or 16 runs means 16 treatment combination let it be treatment combination. Now, if you have every treatment combination having one replicate, so you have 16 observations and you know that what are the number of parameters to be estimated? Four main effect you have to estimate 4 C 2 2 a interaction effect 4 C 3 3 way interaction effect 4 C 4 4 way interaction effects this is these are the effect you have to estimate. So, what is 4 C 2 4 into 3 by 2 that means 6 4 C 3 also 6 4 C 4 is 1 and this is 4. So, how many you require 6 plus 6 4 c 3 is 4 factorial 4 this is 4. So, so you require to estimate 15 effects 15 effects correct. Now, if your n equal capital n total is 16. So, for total computation of SST total SST that you have 15 degrees of freedom. Now, you require 1 degree of freedom for each of the effect parameters. So, this 15 degrees of freedom will be lost because 1 for 4 for degree will be lost for main effect 6 and another 6 plus for 11 for the interaction effects. For error there is no degree of freedom available means no, no free observations available which help you to estimate the error. So, this is what is the problem you will be facing when you have single replicates. Then what is the way out? Way out is that the uh, the sparsity of effect principles, sparsity of sparsity of effect principle. What does it mean? Main effect usually becomes significant. Maybe two interaction effect will also may be significant, but three interaction effect, four interaction way interaction effect, then that may be insignificant insignificant. So, that means, you do not require to compute all the parameters effect parameters 
4 plus 6 may be you will estimate 10 then remaining this 5 will you do not require to estimate in that case what depend these 5 degrees of freedom they will go to error estimation. So, that means we will be in a position to check whether these effect are significant or not. By saying this I am not saying that all the two way interaction will be significant or all the main effect will be significant. The effectivity of per se principle says that the higher order in interactions usually contribute less compared to the lower order interactions. Okay. We will see uh, all those things with reference to an example and by this time I am assuming that you all know that what is contrast and you know what are how to compute the effects equal to contrast by 2 to the power k minus 1 into n here n is 1. So, c by 2 to the power k minus 1. So, then your s s c by c square by 2 to the power k into n n equal to 1. So, that is c square by 2 to the power k like this and also you know degree of freedom you know what is anovertable and how to how to estimate your f 0 all those things that is known to you and we have we have deliberated all those things in say almost all the lectures what is ANOVA, what is degree of freedom, what is f 0. So, I am sure that you will not face any problem related to this uh, test hypothesis testing. Please keep in mind in all the lectures so far start uh, uh, um, bearing a few in the beginning. So, we uh, we are always doing some kind of hypothesis testing all the classes. So, here our in all all those this later later lectures we are talking about main effect and interaction effects. So, there will be hypothesis related to each of the main effects related to each of the interaction effects and using F statistics you are basically finding out whether the effects are significant or not and the basis is that partition the total sum square into the effect sum square and then use mean square sum square and then do the traditional way of analyzing um, these things using ANOVA. So, here what I will show you this is example uh, uh, that uh, the date uh, that 4 controllable factors are there that means A, B, C and D uh, each at 2 levels due to shortage of um, raw materials only single replicate is possible to run and a compute effect you are you required to compute effect of A, B, C, D, A, B, B, C all those effects. So, we have seen that there will be 15 effect parameters and then compute sum square for each of the effects 15 effects including a sum square error and do test for significance comment on the error and effect estimation. So, I have already come given you enough hints on the uh, error calculation and um, effect estimation. Let the data is like this. Okay. So, this uh, this example is available in uh, Montgomery book. So, uh, so far I am assuming now that that you know why this is within bracket 1, this is A, this is B, this is A B. So, if you if you sc scan through each of the rows for the factors. So, if you find out every uh, in uh, the uh, find out a row which contains all minus 1 that is within bracket 1. So, A means the only the effect that the column of factor A and row 2 you see that this is 1 and all others are minus 1. So, A that means the A at low and others are like the same manner when A B C D you are writing you see all are positive plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. What is the response here? Response 44 means the y value here. Here what we are saying if you conduct an experiment keeping A B C D all at low level the response value is 44. Suppose what is 100 here? Here this is A D that means you are keeping A at high level and D at high level and both B and C at low level and then if you run the experiment you will be getting the response value 100. 
Similarly, here A B C D 94, it simply indicates that when all the factors are at high level, the the, the experimental result with, with reference to the response variable values is 94, that is what you got. Okay. So, now if there would have been more replications, you had you would have more number of response values here, maybe 44, maybe for 50 or something, something like this. But we have only single replicate, so that is why these are all single observed values when you have conducted experiments against each of the experimental settings. Okay. Now, you that is this is what is again your design matrix. What is your design matrix here? You have 1, 2, like 16 runs, and you have A. So, it will be minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 like this and then B this will be minus minus plus plus like this then C and D. So, this is your design matrix. So, from this design matrix you can using the algebraic signs what we have discussed earlier. So, you can find out this design matrix also. So, you have A then you have B then you find out A B you write C, then you find out A C, you find out B C, then you find out A B C, then you put D, you find out A D, you find out B D, you find out C D, then here A B C, then A B, similarly you will be getting A B D, B C D, uh, a C D, A B C D, so like this. So, that is what is written here. So, if I miss missing something you can fill up. What happened in the previous slide A B C D the column you got and here A B A C B C A B C. So, what is A B A C B C? That multiplying A column B column you get this multiplying a column c column you get this like this. So, this entirety is known as the basically the what I am saying the total uh, that uh, design including the interactions. Okay. So, this is then what happened when you have conducted experiment and we, we set the labels like this these are the values. Okay. Now, what we want basically we want to compute the contrast and then we want to contribute the contrast square because contrast store will give us the main effect a all effects and contrast square will give us some square. So, what we have done suppose you want the contrast for A then the eighth column will be multiplied by this run level the treatment combination here this one will this numerical value will be will be getting from the this total. So, this total multiplied by A then you are getting this column, total multiplied by B column you are getting this column, this column, this column like this. Okay. So, how are you getting this column? You are multiplying this A column with this total column. Then when you take the sum you are getting contrast because when you multiply this run column with this with this A column factor A column by the run column or treatment column you will get contrast because this will be just adding or subtracting things. So, now using the total value that value of each of the treatment for y you will be getting here also the numerical values. Now, when you take sum of all those numer numerical values you are getting 165 this 165 is the contrast for A similarly contrast for B contrast for C contrast for D and their squares are like this. So, you do by your own if there is there is some kind of computational mistakes may be while while doing all those things in excel if we have committed any 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 mistake somewhere please rectify and but this is what is the procedure. The more important thing is that we are giving you the procedure how you will be doing it ok if there are some some error somewhere in calculation it is always knowledge mm, correctable. So, that means A B C D contrast con you have computed contrast square computed. 
Similarly, A, B, all second order interaction, third order interaction and fourth order interaction, you have found out the contrast and contrast square. So, once you have the contrast, you know now the what is the effect and some square. So, we have found out effect accordingly. Okay. So, I will show you the last one. Suppose, A, B, C, D effect, how it will be con, con, effect A, B, C, D, how it will be calculated? A, B, C, D will be contrast A, B, C, D divided by what happened? 2 to the power k minus 1 into n. Now, what is contrast A, B, C, D? You see that this is what is the A, B, C, D column. Now, contrast A, B, C, D is 13, sum of all those values. So, that means, this one is 13. What is your k? k is your 4, 4 minus 1 that will be 3 and n equal to 1. So, that means, 13 divided by 2 to the power 3 that is 8. So, your 8 this value is 1.625. Okay. So, as a result you see here what is happening here A B C D is 1.625. Suppose this is what is the effect calculation A B C D effect. Suppose you want to compute some square A B C D, what you will write down C square A B C D divided by 2 to the power k into n. So, C square is 13 square divided by 2 to the power 4 into 1. So, this is 169 by 30. Is it so? 16. It will be 16. 2 to the power 4 is 16. So, then this will be 10.56. So, see here that SS is 10.56. So, how many parameters you have to estimate here? There are 15 effect parameters, 4 main effects. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 2 way interaction effects, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 3 way interaction effects and 1, 4 way interaction effects and they are effect param estimate effect is contrast by, by the uh, 2 to the power k minus 1 into n that sense you are able to find out all the effects. You see the effect values are positive and negative also that mean some of the effect when goes from one level to another low level to high the y, y values are increasing some cases it is decreasing and that is true for interaction effects also. And then SS also you are computing in the same manner. So, what will happen to the total? Total you can compute, but what will happen to error here? You cannot find out error because you do not have free observations for you to compute error. So, as a result that there are two way things that you stop here or you find out some innovative way so that you can compute the errors. So, the innovative way is that you just you know the SS already this SS is basically the explanation because we all know from the analysis of variance that sum square total is the sum square error a sum square b sum square c plus sum square d plus sum square a b plus sum square b c plus sum square a c plus sum square a d plus sum square b d plus sum square c d plus sum square a b c plus sum square your a b d plus sum square a c d plus sum square b c d plus sum square a b c d. So, this total is sum of all the individual contribution. So, as a result it is advisable that find out the percentage contribution of each of the effects. So, this is nothing but what way you will find out the percentage contribution that individual contribution divided by total contribution. So, this is what is the the contribution of A 
2 SST is 30.66 percent this divided by SST. Similarly, contribution B is 0.82 percent only, contribution C is 7.75 percent, contribution D is 14.89 percent like this. Okay. So, that means, you are getting each of the contribution. Now, here happen what happened? You have to drop some of the parameters in order to get the error. As we say that the higher order interactions will be dropped or so in that case what is happening there is issue that suppose A is a significant, B is significant then its higher order, second order interaction A B it is better to keep that in the model because if you do not consider that interaction what will happen your result may be erroneous. So, as a result from this um, contribution plot you find out which are the effect parameters which contribution is negligible, but which lower order contributions are not there. Considering this we found out that B is negligible and 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 we found out that B C, B D, A B C, A B D and your B C D, A B C D all are very very negligible. But in the same same logic, why we, we, we should not keep um, uh, this one that C D because this is also negligible. Similarly, A C D this is also negligible because percentage contribution is less than even one. But you will not do this. The reason is here A is significant, C is significantly contributing, as well as D is also significantly contributing. So that's why their interaction AC let it be there. So the similarly interaction ACD let it be there. So in itself, what I we are saying that we are saying that you find out the main effect part first. Those are which are contributing, keep them, keep them. Then see the interaction part. A, B, B, C like this and then see that which are contributing in the sense the percentage contribution is reasonably high, but it is a subjective one at this level. So, then B, C, A, B, B, C, C, D, A, D, A, D like this. So, here you find out which are contributing those contributing keep, but it is something the contribution is low, but it is both the primary main effects are still significant then that also you keep. So, in that sense we have gone it is always advisable that higher order interaction should be dropped provided uh, provided there will be there will be significant uh, evidence that if you drop them you will not go for you will not finally, landed into a wrong model the approach is first find out the effects main effects drop which is not significant and then subsequently find out the second order effect and drop which are not significant. But at the same time if you see that you are dropping a interaction second order interaction whose primary or main effects are significant advisable that you do not drop this keep in the model. Okay. By following this logic what happened we have dropped 8 effect parameters B, A B, B C, B D, A B C, A B D, B C D and A B C D. So, then we have a new table where we are saying the sources of variations are A C B A D, A C A D, C D and A C D and the rest of the the effects the 8 effects what are dropped they are basically comprising the error with 8 degrees of freedom. Okay. So, this is our final ANOVA table. Now, you are in a position to find out MS for everything also you will be in a position to estimate the F 0 because you have error MSE, MSE is also available with you. So, as a result if I follow this one the F 0 value you find out that A, C, D, A, C, A, D they are significant and others are not significant. Okay. Now, with F and then you can compute the tabulated value and this is what you are getting.
Okay. So, this is what is the what is the logic we have provided to you, but there is no sacrosanct that it is not sacrosanct that you have to follow only this logic there will not be alternative way of thinking, but whatever you do you must keep in mind that the basic objectives of this kind of experiment is to finding or screening out the insignificant factors and their interaction or in their interaction effects. Mm, so, that you will get a good model and keep the meaningful factors for further analysis. So, now if I con we consider that these are the factors which are basically to be kept in the model, then the you can go for the regression analysis and you will find out x 1, x 3, x 4, x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 1, x 4. So, A will be denoted by x 1, c x 3, d x 4, x 1, x 3, x 1, x 4, this is what we have considered here. So, x 1, x 3, x 4, x 1, x 3 and x 1, x 4 considered here. So, and then these are the different learn run level, this is intercept and this is using excel sheet we found out the error quantity. Okay. Why error is important? Because uh, you have to you have to do residual analysis and that residual analysis will tell you whether the model is fit or not, whether the assumptions are violated or not. Also from regression point of view you can find out the r square values and other things. Okay. So, this response surface gives us this kind of contour plot. So, I will explain only one suppose if you contour, uh, develop contour plot for x 1 and x 4 keeping x 3 constant then what will happen you will get this kind of this kind of plot. So, um, what is needed here in addition to this that what is the y value for this line y value for this line y value for this line. So, here what happened they are almost parallel. So, that means the interaction effects are not that interaction effects if you see a d they are significant a d a c significant, but anyhow because this is a c means x 3 and a d is x 4. So, in this plot we are talking about x 1 and x 4 okay, keeping other other uh, x x 3. Uh, signi, uh, at constant, but anyhow when because of interactions if we judiciously find uh, if we go for other other options we may find a curvature uh, some kind of curvilinear plot also what I mean to say suppose you are doing this it is this kind of plots represent that there is no uh, that interaction term like beta 1 to these are not there but in this case from the data we got this kind of things, but many times you may get like this, this kind of plot also you will get um, that is what is when the interaction effects are significant. So, here in the last plot is the normal probability plot. So, the residual vis a vis cumulative probability when we plot we found out that there is a there is the, the this is basically using excel we plot, but it is better to use the probability paper. So, in that case what you will get you will get a straight line when you join the points you will get a straight line if you get so then that is what is your uh, that uh, errors are normally uh, distributed and that is one of the assumptions. So, another another major uh, you can do what we have already discussed several times the fitted value versus residual suppose this side residuals and this side the fitted y fitted y that is y cap. So, here it is expected that you will get random observations random plot it should not be any any trend or anything like this. This is one for constant variance this is required one is normality another one is maybe the order of experiment vis a vis this side is your this side is the um, error values. So, that also should be random it should not show any pattern so, that means the autocorrelation is not present that is to be tested also. So, okay, all those tests we have discussed earlier in different cases, but please remember this is also valid for this kind of this kind of design. So, here again let me tell you that we have we are we have used 
the content of this book design analysis of experiments written by dc montgomery published by willy thank you very much i hope you have understood the to the buckle factorial design when when there will be many replications and when there will be single replication in case of single replication we have given you a scheme that how to conduct uh, compute the errors even though you have single replicate and using the effect of uh, sparsity of effect principle okay thanks a lot thank you